Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to Hook and Sword. My name is Megan and we are gonna go over dye lots. So as I was doing research on this, I wanted to cite my sources. So I got all this information from craftsy.com, Wikipedia, and Lion Brand, and I will have those links down in the description. So the things we're gonna go over is what is a dye lot? How does this happen? What if the skein says no dye lot? And if you have purchased a bunch of yarn that they all have different dye lot numbers, how to work with it if you can't return it. <laughs> if you like this kind of content, feel free and subscribe and give this video a like and let's jump into it. So first, what is a dye lot? A dye lot on a skein of yarn, you will find it either pressed like a little stamp or you will see it printed on a skein of yarn. So for Lion Brand Wool Ease, you will see it is stamped on here. Yeah. And for Big Twist Value, they actually have it printed out right here. So what this means, just because you bought a bunch of yarn of the same color name doesn't mean that the color shade is the same. You will see a slight tint or a slight shade lighter or darker throughout your project. So how does this happen? So Mikey from Crochet Crowd actually filmed the whole process of how the yarn gets dyed in the bins and gets onto the shelves. So I'm just gonna give you a rundown of what happens. So what happens is they put a big tub of water and the dye and the water is boiling and they put the yarn in there and they let it soak in there for however long it needs to be for that color and they take it out and they do the drying process to process the yarn. So each time when a batch of yarn gets dyed, there might be a slight change from the last batch and it kind of inevitably makes a tint lighter or darker from the last batch. That's just how it goes. I didn't know about dye lots when I first started crocheting and I made my first blanket. It is a granny square blanket. And as I was working the red, I noticed there was a slight shade difference. I wasn't sure if my eyes were playing tricks on me. I was crocheting for hours. It was late into the night and I looked it up. I bought two dye lots. So this is in the 72,000s and this is in the 52,000s. I just bought whatever was in that bin and went to town and didn't realize what was happening. So I learned the hard way so you don't have to. <laughs> so, so what if your yarn says there's no dye lot? That is a great blessing because you can piece by your yarn as you're working your project, which is great to save money. I do that all the time with coupons and I can make a $100 blanket go to a $50 blanket if I work it right. And, or if I work the sales right. And so that, if you're using one with, more, with a no dye lot, that means they have a bigger bin they can process a lot more yarn and a lot more quicker and they can get it out. And usually that is an acrylic yarn, which is not a bad thing. I use it all the time. It's just a cheaper yarn. So with that being said, if you have a red heart with love red, like holly red, and you bought that like several years ago and then you decide to get back into the project and you buy more of that red you might see a little bit of a change in the color that's because it was a whole new batch that got in there and that's okay because we're gonna talk about how to work with that so what do you do if you have different dye lot numbers there are a couple ways to work with this if you cannot return it or you cannot find that dye lot number and it's way expensive on Etsy which happens, there are a few tricks. So what I'm gonna do with this project is I'm actually gonna block out some of the colors. So I have one row of the red, I have a black, and then I can use a new whole new skein as that. 
but I'm also gonna break it up with a neutral color in there. So it's, it's gonna, it'll be fine, it'll be good. <laughs> The only person that's gonna notice it is me, but if you color block it or space it out, it will look more seamless and not as noticeable. So another way to do it is to alternate skein. So you'll have one dye lot for one row and then the next dye lot in the other and you kind of stack them up until you run out of the original dye lot number you were working with and you will continue with the new one. It will make that transition a lot better and it will be a lot less noticeable when you finish it. It will look a little weird at first, but it, it is what it is and it will be fine. <laughs> so, so I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about dye loss, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you have any special requests of any project you'd like to see in the future, also leave a comment down below and feel free and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.